Here we go. And now, let's take a look at the opening of the Forgan score registry. And to do so, I'll call Dan Wamuald Uon, in charge of developing the ecosystem, and Gérard Lelage from STG Interactive Development Project Manager to tell us more about the various steps forward in opening up the foreground's core registry. Over to you, Romuald. Hello, Romuald. Hello once again. How are you doing? Fine. And you? I'm doing great. A lot of things have been happening, right, since the last conference. Absolutely. Since last night, what I've seen only confirms this feeling. I work with OP3FT teams that the see all the work accomplished since the last Forgans Technology Conference is impressive. To recap briefly what you can do in promoting events based on the work conducted in the past months, I drew a picture to show you that we carry out different types of actions. I'll go very quickly now over this slide because we've been talking about a lot of things since yesterday. At the OP3FT teams, in terms of promotion, we're working on two key challenges. The first is a news campaign because we'll never say it enough. OP3FT has an endowment fund. So it's a nonprofit making organization. So everything is developed as an open standard can, that can be used free of all. On the promotional promoting team, we try to inform as many people as possible about the work carried out by the teams to enable them to understand this technology. The interview with Stefan was a perfect example of what we can do, and therefore to understand, to use it, and to make the most of it either out of passion, some people like to develop websites in their free time, or by creating activities. So the first thing, information. And secondly, federate an ecosystem. We have seen examples between yesterday and today, testimonials, all of these people we have met. So our action consisted in taking part in promotional events as speakers. We spoke, we were at NEMSCOM, also video conferencing in Hong Kong, invited by the Arbitration Center, which works with us, implementing the DRTF uh, process that we can speak about during the round table. Since December, we've been carrying out tests with our early FCR account administrators. The companies that you saw at FTC2 testing out the platform for registering for against addresses and networks. With Gerald, we'll have an illustration of this platform. Maybe we can give the names again for those who weren't there and who would like to contact them. Yes, right now. Polomen, Sebrand, and Wittetik are registered on this program. As you saw a few minutes ago, there'll be newcomers on this program. Excuse me, let me just announce that on the FCR.Forgans site, you can find the addresses of the early FCR account administrators if you want to register, contact them. So we also had encounters with people specializes in intellectual property, lawyers, and uh, various unions, and the Bureau of Beta that we will be telling you about at the next uh, conference. It's a union of all the professionals in the field of trademarks. Uh, we also had some international tours to circulate information. Also, there was the creation of the OB3FT workshops because something that came out of the uh, uh, FTC is the workshops. Uh, as the conferences, uh, uh, by virtue of their format, are very interesting to 
uh, uh, explain to a wide, broad panel of people the the, the, the latest news, the uh, advances, etc. But we wanted to have a more workshop type of format so that we could work with a specific community of people on certain components of the technology. For instance, in December 2014, in partnership with APRAM, we organized a, a conference on UDNRPF, a workshop rather, to uh, address a very specific uh, audience. And we also or, or organized a workshop with the FCR account administrators to, uh, to get the process uh, rolling. And by the way, says uh, uh, if some people are interested, the um, videos are online on the uh, frogans.org site. And this is also the case for the uh, UDRPF uh, charter. And the other workshop uh, with the early uh, account administrators were not put online, but uh, the reason I urge you to go on this page is that you have a contact address. If you are interesting, interested in these workshops, uh, do um, consult with OP3FT. And also, we worked on the, the, the theme of to, 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 to tonight, that is the schedule for uh, uh, rolling out the technology. So talking about uh, um, the schedule we had at the last conference, uh, talked about the potential opening to for uh, trademarks holders to register trademarks as fragrance networks. Um, what is the, the state of things today a few months down the line? I know, as you mentioned, that OP3FT uh, is first and foremost uh, something in project mode. Um, so the idea is not to uh, uh, make specific dates and announcements, but how can you tell us about the way priorities have changed over the last few months? Maybe we could move on to the next slide. Um, so not to make any particular, particular announcements, but at FTC2, we had announced an opening of the priority registration period for rights holder uh, end of December 2014, early 2015. Well, in fact, we are aiming to stick to this sh sh schedule, actually, and we are still uh, looking at this. There's early 2015, and before we uh, talk about the sh schedule in more detail, um, let's uh, talk about the way the program programs project is being rolled out is something that goes gradually but not step by step the reason we do this is that we is for the acceptance uh, of the technology by the community because when we see the diversity of the communities that we need to address legal uh, host measures uh, domainers uh, graphics and so on and so forth um, delivering everything in one go would be impossible in practical term because we've only got 30 people at the OP3FT. But also, it would not be the smartest way to address the market in that our uh, aim is to allow you as a community to uh, use this uh, technology. So it is for us an obligation to gradually introduce the various components of this technology. The second point is a more practical reason or pragmatic reason is that the issues we address are quite complex. If you look at the F, uh, ACR specification that we mentioned earlier, the work in terms of R&D to uh, come up with these uh, rules and policies is huge. And sometimes so there are uh, tasks that can take a very long time, and you can't have everybody working on everything at the same time. So we have a dual constraints to allow a biggest number of people to use and accept and, and develop the technology, and the secondly, internally, to be able to produce um, deliveries of quality, stable, and over the long run, because our aim is to have a stable basis for the whole internet community uh, over time. Now, uh, talking about the gradual um, rolling out, we see that there's a priority period for rights holder. Z -Z. So why do we start with um, trademark holders? This will be covered during the roundtable, but briefly. 
uh, the idea is to uh, uh, put them in the limelight so that they uh, don't feel that they're being trapped, you know, or cheated. Because if you look at the demos that we have seen yesterday and today, we are will be working on the publication of sites in the coming weeks, and certainly the enthusiasm for uh, these sites will grow. And if you don't anticipate this growth and the potential uses of the sites and therefore of the addresses, then the rights uh, hold, the, the trademark holders may feel that they have been uh, caught in a net that they can't get out of. Now, um, this uh, priority period for the trademark holders, we would aim at opening this uh, for ICANN 52, which will be held in Singapore from the 8th to the 12th of February. So our window is there, and we're making our best efforts to uh, achieve this. This objective will be achieved provided a number of conditions are met. And one of the of the prerequisites the other is the test that we make with the early FCR uh, account administrators. We've had a request for technical documentation. And indeed, uh, this shuttling back and forth of, uh, with the various players can uh, generate a delay of a few weeks. But we will stick to this um, deadline of the ICANN 52 in Singapore. Then you have the, the people who want to have an entrepreneurial project around sites and and uh, programs. And that's what there was this uh, project of Esther yesterday, which is more like a collaborative approach. But the chances are that other private um, initiatives would emerge with people who would like to be at position on addresses. So we're still aiming for mid-2015 to be able to uh, deliver to the community some first beta versions of broken players so that um, people can br browse and navigate on frozen site and start building the ecosystem. Right, so you, this is a really in the pipeline and coming out soon. Uh, basically, we will be holding a roundtable um, of trademark holders later on and legal advisors as well. So who should you turn to if you want to register your trademark in the FCR, in the FCR as a fragrance um, network name? And yes, you should not turn to a free FT for several reasons. So the reason is that we realize that OP3FT, as the Fondation Diamond Fund, is not entitled to have any money-making activities, but it runs the FCR database. And this contains all the registered programs addresses. So this arrow shows that OP3FT owns this database and sets the rules and policies as technical specificity, specification, and it, as it cannot technically and commercially operate the registration of these addresses, it delegates this operation and to the uh, FCR operator. So uh, today, a trademark holder or person who would like to get positioned and register for a dedicated fragrance address or network should uh, go and meet um, an FCR operator to register the, um, the address, because this is the way it's organized. You are a holder. You turn to an FCR account administrator, which is the equivalent, if you can compare, if you with the registrars. These uh, FCR AA uh, will be able to register on your behalf as a holder a fragrance address or network dedicated, that is. Great. So if I now look at it from the angle of an FCR account administrator, what is it I can do to conduct these operations in the FCR database? Well, we'll look at this uh, very practic in very practical terms because Gerald is in charge of the um, access interface to the uh, FCR platform who will be able to show you an illustration of what 
It's, a, it's the process when you're an FCR account administrator to register a dedicated fragrance network with the priority registration period. Before you start, Gerald, could you briefly introduce yourself? Yes, good evening. My name is Gerald and I work for the operator, the FCR operator in the development team, uh, software development team. Uh, this, uh, we have two parts in the FCR operator's mission. One part dedicated to the infrastructure and the network, which will be dedicated to uh, the resolution of um, fragrance addresses and networks. The other part is uh, more about development and is linked to the creation of the uh, database, FCR database, and the maintenance of this uh, database. The development team is also in charge of developing the um, FCR API, which is a layer uh, placed on top of the FCR base and allows the various stakeholders to um, do a number of actions in this database. So uh, in terms of various stakeholders, we identified uh, several stakeholders, the public part, which allows us to test the, the availability of an address or fragrance network. We have the stakeholder, the uh, UDRPF uh, stakeholder, which we covered in the previous conference, to uh, solve a number of um, disputes related to fragrance network names or addresses. The third um, stakeholder is the operator himself. As um, the operator of the database, they should be able to uh, can make a number of operations on the, the database. And then you have the account administrators who are the, the last uh, series of um, uh, operators who need to register addresses, uh, fragrance addresses, and so on, and, and so on, and do a number of actions either for themselves or the, on account of their clients. So what I suppose propose to you to do uh, uh, Gerald is to take the last example. We'll have a role play. I will uh, represent a trademark holder, and I'll be your client. You'll be the FCR account administrator. And I'm coming to see you uh, because I would like to register my trademark, which is called, I will not say Stefan, but say um, my brand. It's called my brand. So. How do I go about it? As an FCR account administrator, what will you help do, Jen? Well, as an account administrator, you need to check that the address or name is available. So for this, we have an interface available for access to this FCR API. It's a web interface, rather user-friendly. But we're not talking about a mm, public type of uh, website. It's a an interface for professionals, so it's uh, pretty uh, simple and not very sexy, you'd say. Um, so this is the HTML interface for the public part. We have different potential actions, like testing the availability of a of a network, private network. So if you select this action, this is what it does. Then, uh, as we saw earlier, you need to choose the linguistic category that you want to register your network in. So uh, the linguistic category I confirm is Latin. <laughs> Uh, and then we send the query to the server. So you see the action went well, the server is working pro properly, and the address of the fragrance network is said to be available for all to be registered. Therefore, from this point in time, we can 
log on to the interface dedicated to account administrators to register this address. So the, the address I wanted to register is available so we can go on with the registration process. So I'm an account administrator. I connect to the interface, which is pretty much the same in terms of look and feel. The FCR API is what OP3FT has defined to conduct a number of operations on the database. In the longer term, there will be about 150 actions available, and they are um, organized in various um, sections, processes, and actions. And this uh, hierarchy is to be found in the interface also. First, you need to choose the section. You want to create a fragrance network, a dedicated fragrance network. And then you choose the process. For the time being, there's only one. But uh, later, you will, will have several. Can't say for sure how many, but there will be more. So what you're telling me is that it's, uh, you, you follow these steps one by one, and then you choose uh, in sequence. And then you choose the, the action either to start the registration of a network or confirm that you want to confirm, revise, or abort the creation of such a network. So in the case of my brand, I want to start the um, creation of this network. Here you find the identifiers that I already filled in. That is my own identifiers and my access key, which are private and specific to each account administrator. So where you're an, an FCR account administrator, you have these identifiers. Yeah. When you create your account, uh, you receive um, an, an identifier and an access key, which is not a password. It's a 42-character access key, which you need to keep uh, um, very much in secrecy. Uh, then you choose the network name, all lower case, uh, but I want to, you could have chosen capital, but we chose lowercase. Then you choose the number of um, or the years or the an end date for the registration period. So you could say two years. And it's one to ten years, if I'm not mistaken. That's right, one to ten years maximum. Then the type of uh, registration. This links up to what Romuald said earlier. We're talking about different periods. We are now moving in, into a period reserved for the brand, for the brands or the trademarks. So certain names are reserved, like country names, the Red Cross. Uh, so there are words, terms that you cannot buy because they are reserved for uh, recognized uh, um, organizations. There's a list of uh, reserved names that is uh, published. Uh, in particular, uh, on the fcr.fragrance uh, site, you can download this list. So I registered this brand for the period reserved to the trademarks holders, out of which I choose the type of trademark that I represent, either a registered trademark or well-known trademark. I'm happy with well-known, yeah. So here, as an account administrator, you may choose either to register the the frequency or domain or address for yourself or for a third party or client. So in this particular case, we'll do self-reg. This thing authorization is about the publication of data. What it means is that the operator, by way of its um, delegation contract with OP3FG, is um, uh, held to publish all the names and addresses that are published. But a uh, network holder may point out that they will not like to be um, uh, appearing in um, address directories. So if uh, so, so in that case, you are entitled not to be uh, published. 
mm. or be it in a directory or uh, accessible to search engines, for instance. So then the action is, ex is uh, uh, executed. It's, the cost is 3,000 euros with uh, 1,500 uh, uh, euros per year, as it was bought for two years, it's uh, 3,000. So you were able to confirm this uh, registration. Yes, we, uh, in fact, we registered the network. It's not quite uh, registered yet. We need to confirm it. Is this a security feature? Yes, if, for instance, if anybody um, uh, were able to lay hands on your access key or identify, they could register addresses uh, uh, in your name. So you may not agree. So you will have to um, confirm this by email. After you're receiving an email, you to confirm that it's you who did it. Okay. So as an account administrator, you run through all the procedures. You send the request to the FCR operator, who will then send you back a confirmation email. So I should be getting an email. Um, so this is the mailbox, and uh, it is here. This is the email you would receive as an account administrator. Will you have your identifier? the server that you have access to. And this is the confirmation token you uh, asked to provide to confirm the creation of uh, said network. At the end of this action, you see the outcome and the um, mandatory, mandatory uh, steps to be uh, conducted. For instance, the mandatory step is the confirmation and we're asked to complete the confirmation token that was received by email. So this is a um, further security guarantee. So again, you need to enter the network name, network name. You send the request to the server. And next, the network will be available to provide fragrance sites. So you are now uh, the holder of this network. So if we'll test the availability of this uh, network immediately, the request was um, uh, placed earlier. We can edit it as a new request or query. Then we send the query again. But then you see that the action was successful, meaning that the server worked properly, but the network name is not available because it's already been registered. So what I see uh, in, uh, with this interface is that uh, me, as a, uh, if I wanted to be an account administrator, I have a, port I have a portfolio of, say, 10 to 20 brands. This procedure manually is quite intuitive and user-friendly, but suppose I have more like uh, uh, hundreds of them. Is it possible to automate these? Well, it's possible, as we said earlier on, OP3FT uh, defined, the, uh, defined an API for the FCR, which is a multi-stakeholder API. And the interface that you see here is just an access client. It's not a website uh, <clears throat> to access this interface, this uh, API. So we have another access client, which is PHP, that you can build into your information system. So if this is possible to automate it with the command lines or control lines or whatever. So I have the option, depending on the number of um, the clients I have in my portfolio, I can decide it. I decide to go manually or automated. I could also have websites that would automate for the public at large. Yes, that you could. You could develop your own site so that instead of connecting directly to this interface, you would to run your own operations connecting directly with this PHP client. It's noteworthy that, unless I'm wrong, 
this is the test pa platform that is being tested currently. Yeah, this uh, test platform has been tested for a few weeks by the early account administrators. We've already supplied the PHP client with a predefined action. The PHP client will soon be available for these account, early account administrators. And the interface to be deployed in production will be exactly like this one. It's just the test that will disappear from the URL, the word test, and the interface will be exactly the same. So in the weeks to come, the priority registration period for trademark holders will be open. A player in the ecosystem who would like to get position on there will be able to open an account via this platform, become an account administrator, and uh, do whatever um, procedures for their clients. Yeah, first to you or via the, the FCR something, op3ft.org site, which allows you to become an early account administrator. Now, once production has started and the platform is available, you can directly go log on to this platform to register yourself as an account administrator. Great, thanks a lot for this uh, beautiful demonstration. Thanks to, to the view, Romel, Gerald, for this um, quick and rather comprehensive demonstration of uh, how it is possible to open the FCR. Jean-Manuel, yeah, it is the first time that we see on the stage of our uh, STG Interactive, uh, interactive, uh, which is the operator of the FCR. It's the first time we see them on stage of this uh, FTC. But there are many other people behind, but STG Interactive is a company that works to, as part of a delegation contract with OP3FT to provide this uh, re address reservation uh, platform and provide the resolution of program sites. So it's the whole team that we will be happy to welcome in the next conferences anyway. I'd like to thank them for their work.